Hello, boys and girls. I'm going to play Remember Thomas Edison, what nursery rhyme he did with the phonograph. Let's see. This was called a melodica. I learned how to play that. What's that rhyme? Let's see. Now we're on the last part of Thomas Edison. Tom the telegrapher. Tom was always trying to send messages faster and faster. Even when he wasn't on duty, Tom stayed at work to practice and to watch other telegraphers at work. Then Tom had an idea. He would put two telegraph machines together to help make sure the messages were correct. The first telegraph would tap a message into a piece of paper. The second machine would read the dots and dashes and sound them out at a slower speed. This invention made sure that telegraphers would not make mistakes when sending fast messages. This was Tom's first of many improvements on the telegraph. Tom continued to try to improve his speed in taking telegraph messages. Sometimes these messages came at 40 words a minute and he had to be careful to not make any mistakes. Inventive as usual, Tom created his own type of handwriting. Tom's writing was a mixture of cursive and print. Many of the letters stood straight up. The smaller the letter, the better, Tom thought. All the rest of his life, Thomas Edison wrote in his own unique handwriting. For the next three years, Tom worked at different telegraphing jobs around the country. All the while, he read and studied and made improvements to the telegraph. He found a way to make the telegraph send and receive messages at the same time. Tom was paid more money for his skills. As usual, he spent little money on food or lodgings. He bought science books and he spent money on experiments. He worked especially hard in his electricity experiments. Tom dreamed of someday not having to work at any job. Instead, he would work on his experiments. The wandering and late nights took their toll on Tom, and he got sick. In 1867, when he was 20 years old, Tom returned home to Port, Port Huron. He spent the winter recovering and dreaming. One day, a letter came from his friend, Milton Adams. Milton and Tom had once worked together. Milton asked Tom to join him in Boston. Milton told Tom he could get him a telegrapher's job in Boston, but only if he came quickly. Tom packed his bags and caught the first train to Boston. When he reached Boston, Tom went to the Western Union office. The manager asked him when he could start working. Now, Tom answered. The manager asked Tom to work the night shift. Night work was perfect for Tom. The other telegraph operators decided to trick Tom. They telegraphed the fastest operator in New York City and told him Tom was new and to send him fast messages. The New York man started slowly. Then, got faster and faster. Tom's fingers flew across the paper as he accurately wrote the message. The New York operator began mixing up words. Suddenly, Tom realized a joke was being played on him. Tom sent this message to the other operator. Say, young man, change off and send with your other foot. Everyone laughed. Tom had made the trick backfire. They knew Tom was one of the best telegraphers in America. Tom worked, read about electricity, and experimented. He slept very little. Tom told his friends, I have got so much to do and life is so short. I am going to hustle. And hustle he did. Tom joined a group of young men who were also interested in experimenting and inventing. Tom was 21 when he invented a special machine for counting votes. He applied for a patent on his invention on October 11, 1868. A patent means that invention was Tom's and no one else could copy it without his permission. The, young, the voting machine was Thomas Edison's first patent invention. Unfortunately, no one liked Tom's voting machine. Tom made a promise to himself. He would never again invent anything unless someone had a need for it. Tom invents. Tom lived cheaply, ate little, dressed in wrinkled clothes, slept four hours at night, and spent his money on experiments. One invention paid off. People who owned stock shares and companies wanted to know how well their companies were doing. They wanted to know when stock prices changed. Someone had invented a stock ticker to quickly report stock prices. Tom took this idea and improved it. His invention worked so well that people paid him for it. 
In 1868, Tom had a terrible accident. He spilled some acid on his face. Tom quickly washed his eyes out, but the acid still burned. For two weeks, Tom was blind. Fortunately, his sight returned completely. Before long, Tom grew tired of Boston. It was time to move again. This time, he would go to New York, the biggest, busiest city in America. He was 22 years old. And then I circled his back there, <laughs> New York. Tom arrived in New York in 1869 with no job and a few pennies, but he was determined to make his way in the world. He was so poor and hungry that he begged for a dollar from a friend. Tom wanted the most food for his money. He went to restaurants and ordered apple dumplings. They were cheap and filling. Tom had never eaten anything so good. For the rest of his life, Thomas Edison enjoyed apple dumplings. A friend let Tom sleep on the floor of the Gold Indicator Company. Tom watched others work while he waited for a telegrapher's job. He studied the machines that telegraphed the price of gold. One day, the special gold machine broke down, and no one knew how to fix it. Everyone panicked. They had to know the price of gold or they would lose customers. Tom calmly went to the machine, fixed a broken spring, and the gold machine clicked back to life. The next day, the owner of the company gave Tom a job for $300 a month. Tom enjoyed his work but he kept inventing too. He improved his stock ticker machine. The president of Western Union liked Tom's improved stock ticker so much that he wanted to buy it. Tom didn't know how much to ask for his invention. He thought maybe he should ask for $5,000. No, Tom decided that was too much. Maybe $3,000. The president offered him $40,000, Tom said. I never came so near fainting in my life. The company president wrote Tom a check for $40,000. A banker cashed the check, but paid Tom in dollar bills. Tom stuck bills into his pockets and stayed up all night guarding his money. In the morning, Tom opened his first bank account. With the money, Tom quit his job and opened his own factory to make his stock ticker machines. He hired people to help him. Then Tom built his own laboratory in Menlo Park, New Jersey, where he could experiment day and night. Tom improved the telegraph, and he improved the typewriter. He hired more workers. Before long, Tom had 45 new inventions. Tom was called the Wizard of Menlo Park. One of Tom's workers was Mary Stillwell. Tom fell in love with Mary. On Christmas Day, 1871, Tom and Mary were married. They named their first son Thomas. His father nicknamed him Dot for the Morse code signal. He called his daughter Marion Dash. Their third child was named William but Tom called him Willie. While Tom was busy inventing, so were many others, including Alexander Graham Bell. Bell invented the telephone. Tom took this invention and improved it so voices could be heard better because he was partially deaf. Improving sound was one of Tom's goals. Tom began experimenting with a way of recorded voices. His idea was to speak into a mouthpiece with a needle attached into the end. The vibrations of his voice in the mouthpiece would make the needle scratch a piece of rotating tin foil. Then, if you put the needle into the scratch made by his voice and rotated the tin foil backward, the vibrations would come out of the mouthpiece and his voice would be repeated. Tom made the machine. Into the speaker, he shouted, Mary had a little lamb, its fleece was white as snow, and everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. Then he played it back. Out came Tom's voice. Mary had a little lamp. Tom smiled. His workers shouted. Tom had invented the phonograph. There's a picture of one back there. Well, I have one back there. Tom lights the world. Tom become, became famous around the world for inventing a talking machine. He was even invited to the White House to meet President Ru Rutherford B. Hayes. Tom was paid more and more for his inventions. He worked even harder. This was difficult for his wife and children. He forgot to come home for meals. He stayed awake late at night, inventing new things people could use. From 1878 to 1879, Tom spent much of his time inventing an inexpensive light bulb. He knew it would be powered by electricity. The hard part was to find something that would give off light but not burn up. Tom tried thin pieces of copper and other metals. They did not work. He tried weeds, bamboo, wood splinters, fishing line, pieces of cotton, and human hair. 
Tom tried 3,000 ideas before he solved the problem. Tom took thread and burned it into black carbon. At first, the thread broke when he tried it, put it into a bulb. Finally, on October 21st, 1879, Tom got a piece inside a glass bulb. Tom wired the bulb to his electrical current. The light bulb glowed. Tom expected the light to go out, but it didn't. The light burned all night. Tom's helper stared at the bulb with him. It burned the next day and the next. The first electric light glowed for 40 hours. Tom's electric lights made him even more famous. People from around the world came to see him. Tom's inventions provided him with more money. He said, I always invent to obtain money to go on inventing. In 1884, Tom's wife, Mary, died. He was left with Dot, Dash, and Willie. In 1885, Tom met beautiful Mina Miller, the daughter of a fellow inventor. Tom taught the Morse code to Mina. Later that year, Tom tapped a Morse code message to Mina. Will you marry me? Mina tapped back, yes. On February 24, 1886, Tom and Mina were married. They had three children, Madeline, born in 1888, Charles, 1890, and Theodore, 1898. Thomas Edison kept inventing for the rest of his life. He invented motion pictures. He improved batteries and made cement stronger. Close to his death, he was trying to invent a new kind of tire rubber from goldenrod plants. On October 18, 1931, Thomas Edison's life flickered out. He was 84 years old. Over his lifetime, Tom invented thousands of new things and improved many more. Who would have imagined how much Thomas Edison would change the world when he was born that snowy night in 1847? Thank you, boys and girls. And that's the end of all information about Thomas Edison. Any ideas, put them in the comments. Have a great day. Bye.